welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. My name's Alan and I've been making a bit more cave terrain. A lot of the techniques I'm going to use in this video have already been done in the previous two videos. Um, so if you are wondering how I'm achieving some of these results, please feel free to go back to the part one and part two of the Caves and Caverns videos and, uh, and, and watch those as well. And that'll hopefully help fill in any gaps that, that might pop up. My idea of cave terrain is, is to use cave walls rather than cave tiles. Uh, cave walls, I think, allows you to create big cavernous areas, interesting shapes in terms of like maybe narrow paths and uh, maybe wide open spaces. Also just creating, you maybe, you know, you want kind of U-shaped um, caverns or you want caverns that kind of like weave and, and and kind of go along like maybe like a long shaped cavern um, but the idea here is that these cave wall tiles I like to call them uh, they're basically they're open for interpretation and I want to give you guys some ideas on things that I've been making and things that I came up with uh, to help improve these these cave walls because you can decorate cave walls in much the same way as you decorate cave tiles um, you're just going to go about it in a slightly different way. So, yeah, this is what I've been making. Let's just crack on with it. Alright, so let's start off with some XPS form. I'm just going to shape some of these pieces into a little bit more of a beveled edge so that it will kind of sit nicely against the dungeon tiles on the floor. And I've also got a piece of blue foam there in the background. Uh, that's been cut out and has a notch cut in the sides so that the previous cave tiles I made in parts one and two will sit nicely uh, inside those slots as well, keeping the whole thing nice and modular. So after I've textured it with a craft knife, I'm just going to take some hot glue and stick the floor to the wall using the bench to keep those surfaces nice and flush and flat against each other. And a few foam rocks hot glued into place. We'll add a little bit of reinforcement to the floor and the wall. These have just been made out of offcuts of foam that have been textured with an aluminium ball, kind of cut into shape. You could of course pin them into place as well using some cocktail sticks if you wanted to. Now because this piece is going to be a waterfall, I want to make sure that there are no gaps around the edges where the two pieces have been joined together. So I'm using some sculptor mold just to fill in those cracks. And it's important to texture the floors here, the surfaces, so a little bit of PVA glue and some basing sand will sort that out. And we have to make sure to protect that form, so I'm going to give it a nice coat of black paint and Mod Podge. And then anything that isn't painted with this, that isn't foam, can just be sprayed black. And once you've done that, we can start to add the overbrush of medium grey over the whole thing. And then just introduce a few warmer tones, kind of browns and ivories and whatnot, to the stonework to give it a little bit of life and a little bit of texture. Now I want parts of the floor around this pool to be kind of more muddy and earthy, so I'm going to introduce an earth colour here uh, around the pool area. I'm just going to show you on a different piece the, the wash that went on with just my usual multi-purpose wash kind of a black brown mixture with a bit of water in there and once that's done it can start adding some water okay now on a non-stick surface I'm putting down some gloss mod podge some liquitex natural sand which dries clear hopefully and then the usual kind of hot glue method which is really quick and simple 
I'm just going to kind of drag it down across the nonstick surface and hopefully it will produce kind of waves. It's worth mentioning that the hot glue I'm using is actually very, very clear. I managed to find these very clear hot glue sticks. A lot of the time they're kind of cloudy and maybe a little bit less transparent. But thankfully I've managed to find these. If you can get your hands on some, they're really useful for doing water effects. Now while those were curing, I'm going to do a resin pour. So this is the same way as I did it in the previous video on the cave pool. I'm just going to go around the whole thing. You can see that there's a little bit of a, a tint to it as well. Kind of a blue green tint. I wanted this pool to be nice and kind of picturesque rather than murky and dank. And because the resin isn't quite as fluid as water, it's a little bit viscous, so you might have to kind of tease it up to the edges of the pool just to make sure it fills in nicely. Okay, so now I'm going to add the waterfall to the rock face. And for this, I'm going to start off using some UV resin in the little crack that was previously made in the rock. I'm going to place the waterfall. I'm going to use the hot glue that was made earlier. Uh, the, the other two weren't quite right for it, and uh, I preferred the hot glue look. And also, it was fully cured, and one of the other ones wasn't. So I'm just going to really sort of stick these in place using some UV resin as it dries clear and it dries very very quickly under a UV light. You can also see there's a little bit of gloss mod podge there on the pool surface which is just for ripples and, and such. I'm going to use some Liquitex natural sand as well just to build up some of those areas that should be a little bit more turbulent and a little bit more bubbly and should help fill in some gaps. And once that's dry, you can take some white paint and just add a little bit of a dry brush to some of the more fast flowing areas to create that white water. Now onto the spider layer. So for this, I wanted to have a piece of rock protruding from the surface, but it had to have a hole in it. So I just kind of made the vague indentation there of a hole using this kind of tube and I cut it away with a craft knife and got this kind of vague hole shape that this spider would be living inside of. I then placed it against the wall section that it was going to be attached to and drew a circle along the inside of it. And then I cut that out as well. I wanted this hole to be quite deep. I didn't really want it to be uh, be able to see the back of it so easily, uh, especially when the black paint would be applied at a later stage. So I cut that out. And then textured the surface with a craft knife again. Just cutting out chunks and making these kind of fault lines in the rock that hopefully help add a little bit of extra texture along with obviously the aluminium ball as well at the end just to really help that kind of rough surface of the rock. I also wanted this piece to be double sided so it didn't have to be a spider layer, it could just be a very tall sheer face of rock. Kind of smoothed out the bottom part here where the floor meets the wall. I 
And the same as before, just adding a little bit of texture to the base, giving it the exact same paint job as the previous one. And using a small piece of a used dryer sheet, I just kind of had to play around with putting this thing inside there and trying to have some little bits poking out, but also not too much of it. I didn't want it to clog up the hole. Uh, so it took a few attempts to sort of get this thing in the right shape that I wanted it. But eventually I just sort of had to <laughs> kind of thumb it in there and add some glue on the inside and it would stick. And then obviously add an absolute ton of moss. And it's also worth mentioning that I made a doorway so that I could have maybe doors leading into or out of these kind of caves and caverns. And I just took a piece of XPS form and shaped it up with a craft knife. I wasn't going to put a door on this, it was really more of a gateway or a kind of an open arch. And the idea was just to help it sort of fit into the environment of this kind of naturally occurring cave that may maybe been mined out by other people. I also found some of these pieces of decorative glass and I stuck those pieces in a bit of existing cave wall and that was just going to be like this interesting mineral area that had been poking out of the rock that hadn't been mined yet. And I also made another piece with a bit of this kind of amethyst crystal style resin piece there sticking out of the wall as well. Now as some of you may know, I have managed to acquire myself a 3D printer, so I printed off this little spider here in the bottom left corner, and I felt like she needed some eggs and a little nest and whatnot, so I found a little base and smeared around some Vallejo earth texture, added a few little rocks to the base, and then stuck down some little tiny ball bearings. These, these are just active little eggs. I just stuck them right into the paste. And that was enough to hold them. Then it got a simple paint job just like the rest of the cave walls and cave tiles did. Now when I was looking at materials to use for spider webbing, uh, I did go through a little bit of a process here, so I'm just going to show you what I did. I found some kind of stuffed teddy kind of wool, and that didn't work very well. So then I chose cotton wool, kind of pulled it apart and kind of splayed it out into this very thin sheet. It's, it's quite difficult to work with uh, because it's so delicate. Um, but it doesn't look half bad, it looks okay. Um, I think what you need is areas of, of density and areas of sparseness uh, in the in the webbing so I think cotton wool does that relatively well and it doesn't look half bad and it's a really good cheap option. But of course the option I went with was a used dryer sheet. I felt like this had a really good 
texture as well but it was in fact a lot easier to work with than the cotton wool so I just tore off some small bits and then stuck it down to the base using a little bit of uh, matte mod podge and that was enough to hold it in place and keep it secure and kind of harden it up as well a little bit make it even more durable A little bit of extra matte mod podge around the edges there over the top of the dryer sheet should help kind of keep it down and keep it fairly secure and it should dry completely clear. And there we are guys, all finished. Um, really quite pleased with, with these extra little pieces that I've added. Um, I don't think I've ever made a waterfall before. Not like a proper one. Um, and there was a few tests I did with different materials here. I even tried things like um, cling film or saran wrap, I don't know what you call it in your country. Um, but it, yeah, it didn't quite look right, it looked like cling film. Um, so. There's a few dodgy tests that happened and that this didn't work out at all, uh, but I'm pretty happy with the, the hot glue method that worked really nicely. Uh, obviously, a lot of moss goes a long way. Um, a really good wash for these cave tiles and cave walls, that goes a long way as well. Um, having it kind of grimy and, and dirty, this kind of mixture between black and brown, it's a really nice halfway point for these kind of dungeons. It is worth mentioning that if you have something called spider serum, which is a liquid in a bottle that you can um, fire through an airbrush, if you have some of that, then definitely use that for spider webs because it is by far the best way to do spider webs. Um, I've just used a dryer sheet because that's what I had. And I don't have an airbrush, and not everybody does have an airbrush, so. It's a bit unfair for me to say, like, you know, use an airbrush, but you've got to go and spend $100, $100, or whatever, on an airbrush. Also, definitely add things like mushrooms and toadstools and fungus and things like that, because those are just perfect for really selling that kind of cave terrain vibe that you're going for. And of course, you might have noticed uh, a few little um, crates and things, the like piles of crates and that, but that just really kind of helps to sell the whole sort of mining scene, that these, these caves and caverns are often former mines and things so if you can have a couple of piles of crates dotted around the place that really that will really help to sell uh, the whole kind of theme of, of the of the cave or mine if that's what you're trying to go for so i hope you enjoyed this video please feel free to like comment and subscribe and hit the notification bell and tell your friends and share it online and stuff and um, that'll all help uh, my reach for this channel and really help grow the channel a bit more in future. I do have an Instagram set up if you want to follow me on Instagram. There is also a Facebook but I don't really go on there very much. Um, I also have a Patreon set up as well and I'm really thankful for my existing patrons uh, and all their support and their financial support goes a long way, it really does. And I uh, just wanted to say a big thank you to you guys. You are the best people. Thank you very much. That's it for this one though, guys. I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Thanks for stopping by and happy crafting.